my name is Kirsty Tucker. I go to Taranga Girls College and I'm interested in a career to do with healthcare. Today I'm going to see what it's like to be in the shoes of a health protection officer. Health protection officers have a wide variety of responsibilities. They identify and manage potential health risks to the public. Today Kirsty is meeting up with health protection officer Trieste Nafika. Hi Kirsty, I'm Trieste. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Our health protection officer protects public health by investigating communicable diseases. We also make sure that water is safe to drink and that recreational water is safe to swim in and shellfish is safe to eat. We have a variety of components to our job, but mainly it's about protecting public health from disease. The role of the health protection officer is varied and no two days are the same. Today Kirsty joins Trieste on a biosecurity check on a ship just arrived in Tauranga from Japan. If the ship passes, then they will issue a sanitation certificate. Knowing where to look comes with experience. Kirsty, this is the galley. We've got torches, so we're going to get down and actually have a look under everything. What we're looking for is infestations of cockroaches or debris that's under there that needs to be cleaned. Okay. okay? Yeah. So turn on your torch. Yeah. So we'll start in this area, so we'll get down. If they find a biosecurity hazard, then what's the next move? We will put some control measures in place and that would involve pest control and um, probably fumigation of the, of the galley uh, or wherever we found the infestation. The inspection completed and the ship has passed. Hi Captain, um, thank you very much you. for your time and for showing us around the ship. Here's the ship sanitation certificate, okay? Thank you very much. Okay, okay, thank you. The typically very day continues and the next stop for Trieste and Kirsty is to check water safety. Okay, Kirsty, we're here at Mount Maunganui at Pilot Bay. Um, we're going to do a drinking water sample um, to test for pH and chlorine. First off, we're going to flame the, the tap, so just get rid of all the bacteria that may be present there. But why does the water need testing? The reason why we do drinking water sampling and testing is because the water um, is actually distributed to a large amount of people and we want to make sure that there is no, no contaminants within that water. Okay, we've come out here so you can have a look at the, the colour wheel. Okay. okay, first of all you can have a look at the chlorine. Public health and the work of the public health protection officer is all about prevention. So what's the result? Are the people of Mount Monganui safe? Okay, so these are both good tests. In the lab, Trieste and Kirsty look for a poison hiding amongst children. A local play centre is sent of a sample of a playhouse to see if the paint used contains lead. Why do we need to test the paint for lead? Lead, when it accumulates in the human body, it creates uh, lead poisoning. And this can cause damage to kidneys and the brain. Um, it can be very dangerous for children. So um, that's why we're doing this test. Okay. Okay. As, as you see, it's turned black, so we know that portion actually contains lead-based paint. Okay. What do we do now? What we need to do now is inform the, the play centre that so they need to either get rid of it or repaint the um, playhouse yeah. so it makes it safe for children to play in. Toy to order Public Health, True speaking. We've got a probable case of influenza. We'll get onto it now. Okay, thank you. Bye. Influenza, commonly called the flu, comes in many forms, some more virulent than others. In this case, it's H1N1, commonly called swine flu. It can cause pneumonia, which can be fatal, particularly for the young and the elderly. Swine flu can spread rapidly, and Trieste has the job of limiting the spread of the virus. Thank you, Dave, for uh, letting us um, come here and see you today. Um, Kirsty's just going to ask you some questions about your symptoms. Okay. Have you had any headaches recently? Yeah, constant headaches. Okay. As Dave has questioned, it has become clear that he has been in contact with many people since he became sick. What is more worrying for Trieste is that Dave has been helping at a camp for kids with diabetes and they would have been particularly vulnerable to swine flu as their immune systems are compromised. OK, Dave, now that we know that you've got all the symptoms that are of influenza, we need to put you in isolation, OK? OK, so what does that mean for me? That means you have to stay at home and not have any contact with your friends or anybody else. 
Communication skills are very important for a health protection officer, as is a good command of English. You'll need to be friendly, but at the same time firm, as you need to gather evidence to make an informed decision about the way ahead with individual cases. So have you been in contact with anybody since you've been back from the diabetes camp? Uh, yeah, I've been around to my cousin, and okay. I met up with a workmate for a coffee in town. We also like to know who he's been in contact with, because those people could easily be infected with what he has. OK, Dave, we're going to take a swab now, um, just off the inside of your cheek, just so we can send it away and confirm the influenza. So, while the sample is analysed, what's the result as far as Kirsty is concerned? Kirsty, she was really great, actually. She'll go a long way if she decides to get more involved in public health. The health protection officer job wasn't exactly what I expected at first. It has a lot more to do with viruses and diseases, and so it's really interesting because you get to help the community and help other people. Um, yeah, I'd really love to do something like this job. Communication is an important skill for a health protection officer. Studying chemistry and biology at school lays a sound foundation for health protection work. To become a health protection officer, you need to complete a Bachelor of Applied Science with a health protection major from Auckland University of Technology or a Bachelor of Applied Science with an environmental health major from Massey University. However, if you already have a Bachelor of Science, you could complete the Graduate Diploma in Environmental Health at Massey University. Once qualified, your skills are recognised and you are designated a health protection officer by the Director General of Health. A knowledge of other languages can be a great advantage and more Māori and Pacifica people are needed in public health. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.